Hello, my name is Robin, and thank you very much for taking the time to watch this new video of mine. A couple months ago, I was supposed to fly from Edmonton to Vancouver with Air Canada on the Airbus A320. That plan fell through because of the fog, my flight got cancelled, and I was put on a Boeing 777 instead. Today, there's a new chance. Today, we're flying from Vancouver here back to Edmonton, back home on the Airbus A321. Let's go. It's incredibly easy to get to the airport. From downtown Vancouver, the Canada Line brings you there in less than 30 minutes. And after 6.30 p.m. on weekends and holidays, the fare is just $3. YVR Airport is full of amazing colorful artwork, including this 12 meter tall totem pole. The airport has its own independent art foundation that is focused on supporting First Nations artists in British Columbia and Yukon. Vancouver, together with Calgary, Montreal and Toronto, is a hub airport for Air Canada and operate direct flights to about 60 destinations worldwide from here, reaching as far as down under. For passengers with priority, Air Canada have separate check-in desks, but with the dozens of self-service kiosks throughout the terminal, it's easy enough to just grab your boarding pass from one of these computers. As I had no luggage to check in, this is where I got my boarding pass from. Aside from gazing at all the art, you can also do some shopping or dining here. Chain restaurants like A&W, Tim Hortons and Carl's Jr. are available. Or if you prefer something more European style, there is a bakery offering sandwiches too. Unfortunately, I didn't have much time to explore the terminal today, as my flight was about to board. Our one hour flight is operated with the 16 year old Airbus A320 and had just completed a five hour flight from Montreal. Air Canada board in zones and I was in zone three for this flight. But for some reason or another, the gate agents didn't feel like boarding by zones and let everyone on as soon as all passengers with priority had gone on board. But boarding felt like a smooth process regardless. Anyway, before takeoff, I wanted to share with you that I share all of my flights on my social media channels while they happen, and I have some really interesting flights coming up over the next two weeks. So if you want to follow me there too, feel free to head over to my Instagram and Twitter accounts for all my latest updates. But for now, let's enjoy this phenomenal takeoff from runway 26 left. This Airbus A320 has a total of 146 seats in the three-class configuration. All seats offer a USB port to charge your mobile devices with. There are two power sockets per row. Seat C and seat F don't have one, so you'll have to share with your neighbors. Every seat also offers an 8.9-inch touchscreen that can be rotated several degrees so that smaller and taller passengers can watch at the right viewing angle. The tray table is of a good size and has a fairly deep indentation for a cup. The table can be moved to accommodate for smaller passengers. In the seat pocket, you have the standard safety card, onboard menu bistro, and the Air Canada in-flight magazine. The seat is roomy and has plenty of legroom.
There's a really broad range of food on the menu, though not everything is available on flights less than two hours, like ours today. Air Canada seems to be focusing more on healthier items and has partnered with Freshie to do so. These are items that you couldn't have imagined on flights three years ago. I also find the food items rather affordable. Air Canada offer free soft drinks, water, coffee, tea and juice. I prefer the cold beer and chose a Goose Island IPA for just under $8 Canadian that came with a bag of pretzels. Browsing the in-flight magazine en route, I found this rather interesting way of drawing all routes Air Canada fly that made me think of a subway map. This is also the first edition since the redesign of the magazine. The magazine is now lighter, resulting in less fuel burn. Lastly, I did want to show you the in-flight entertainment system, and it sure is great to have one, as many airlines no longer offer it, but the system is very dated and incredibly slow, and I ended up with just watching the moving maps. That was a beautiful quick flight between Vancouver and Edmonton. What an amazing view. Aside from the amazing art, there aren't many shops or places to eat at the airport in Vancouver, unfortunately. The flight itself was a smooth ride. The crew on board were super friendly, and to my surprise, free headphones were handed out before takeoff. A free drink and a snack is always nice too. And the prices on the onboard menu are more than reasonable. Offering healthy options on the menu does show that Air Canada are responding to the demands of the modern passenger. The in-flight entertainment system can use an upgrade to today's technology, but overall it was a really good flight and I would love to fly with Air Canada again. In fact, next week I'll be flying with Air Canada again to try out their short haul business class product. But as I'll be traveling next week, there won't be a new trip report on the channel next week. But if you don't want to miss any of the future trip reports, make sure you subscribe. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in two weeks.